Okay, today is uh, 25th of August, uh, and we are on the 46th chapter of the Sangyutta Nikaya, Pujanga Sangyutta. Today we come to Sutta 46.35, Buddha said, uh, Monks, when one attends carelessly, unarisen sensual desire arises, and arisen sensual desire increases and expands. Unarisen ill will arises, and arisen ill will increases and expands. Unarisen sloth and torpor arise, and arisen sloth and torpor increase and expand. Unarisen restlessness and remorse arise, and arisen restlessness and remorse increase and expand. Unarisen doubt arises, and arisen doubt increases and expands. Monks, when one attends carefully, the unarisen enlightenment factor of recollection arises, and the arisen enlightenment factor of recollection goes to fulfillment by development. When one attends carefully, the unarisen enlightenment factor of investigation of Dhamma arises, and the arisen enlightenment factor of investigation of Dhamma goes to fulfillment by development. And similarly for the other factors, uh, enlightenment factors, uh, they arise and the unarisen factors arise and the arisen factors goes to fulfillment because of careful attention. Let's see end of the sutta. So here it says uh, that uh, if one does not have Yoniso Manasikara, careful attention or thorough attention, then the five hindrances arise. La. Or if they have already arisen, la, then they will increase. La. And conversely, uh, if one does have Yoniso Manasikara, careful attention or thorough attention, then the Unarisen enlightenment factors uh, arise, uh, and the arisen enlightenment factors goes to fulfillment by development. It goes to show uh, the importance of this uh, yoniso manasikara, thorough attention or thorough consideration or, or careful attention. The next sutta is 46.30a. The Buddha said, when monks, a noble disciple, listens to the Dhamma with eager ears, attending to it as a matter of vital concern, directing his whole mind to it, on that occasion the five hindrances are not present in him. On that occasion the seven factors of enlightenment go to fulfillment by development. And what are the five hindrances that are not present on that occasion? The hindrance of sensual desire is not present on that occasion. The hindrance of ill will, sloth and torpor, restlessness and remorse, doubt is not present on that occasion. These are the five hindrances that are not present on that occasion. And what are the seven factors of enlightenment that go to fulfillment by development on that occasion? The enlightenment factor of recollection goes to fulfillment by development on that occasion. The enlightenment factor of investigation of Dhamma, etc. All the enlightenment factors go to fulfillment by development on that occasion. When monks, a noble disciple, listens to the Dhamma with eager ears, attending to it as a matter of vital concern, directing his whole mind to it, on that occasion these five hindrances are not present in him, and on that occasion these seven factors of enlightenment go to fulfillment by development. That's the end of the sutta. So here, when we listen to the Dhamma, it says we must listen with eager ears, la, directing the whole mind to it. La. This uh, is having yoniso manasikara, careful attention or thorough attention. La. So when one pays thorough attention, la, that means one is concentrating one's mind la, on hearing the Dhamma. Then the five hindrances uh, for a short while are not present and the seven factors of enlightenment uh, when you concentrate your mind uh, for that short while uh, 
uh, they are considered to be present. Uh, although not fully present because you don't attain up to the jhanas uh, yet, uh, uh, it is enough. Lah. So what the Buddha is saying uh, is that if we listen to the Dhamma with careful attention, uh, directing our whole mind to it, uh, the conditions are right uh, for us to attain uh, the path or the fruit. Uh, uh, because the five hindrances are not there, that means uh, you have wisdom. Uh, because the five hindrances are the cause uh, of delusion, the cause of uh, not seeing things clearly. Uh, so when the five hindrances are, are absent, uh, then we can see things clearly. Uh, knowledge and vision uh, arises. Uh, and also the factors of enlightenment uh, are present. Uh, that means uh, they help us uh, to attain uh, partial enlightenment uh, depending on whether you have uh, samadhi or not. If you have perfect samadhi, then it's enough to uh, to attain perfect enlightenment. But um, if the factors are not that strong uh, for somebody who has not attained the jhanas, uh, still uh, if you concentrate on listening to the Dhamma or reading the suttas, uh, uh, here the Buddha is saying uh, there's enough uh, of the seven factors of enlightenment uh, for you to attain uh, partial uh, liberation. Uh, that means attain the parts and the fruits. Uh, that's why we see in the suttas uh, that most, almost all of the people who attain uh, stream entry, uh, the first path, the first uh, stage of Aryahud, uh, uh, almost all of them uh, do so uh, by listening to the Dhamma. And usually the Buddha will see uh, whether that person, uh, his mind is clear enough uh, to understand the Dhamma. If he has the potential to understand the Dhamma, then only the Buddha will uh, teach the Four Noble Truths to him. Uh, and when he listens to the Four Noble Truths, uh, he has enough understanding uh, uh, to attain the first part, uh, attain stream entry. Uh. The next sutta is... So here uh, also this sutta, this... Uh, 46.38, it is saying indirectly that listening to the Dhamma is the occasion for attaining the path of the fruit. So indicates how important it is to listen to the Dhamma with careful attention, with thorough attention. The next sutta is 46.39. The Buddha said, Monks, there are huge trees with tiny seeds and huge bodies and circlers of other trees, and the trees which they encircle become bent, twisted and split. And what are those huge trees with tiny seeds and huge bodies? The Asata, the Banyan, the Pilaka, the Udambara, the Kachaka and the Kapitana. These are those huge trees with tiny seeds and huge bodies, and circlers of other trees. And the trees which they encircle become bent, twisted and split. So too monks, when some clansman here has left behind sensual pleasures and gone forth from the household life into homelessness, he becomes bent, twisted and split because of those same sensual pleasures or because of others worse than them. I'll stop here for a moment. In Malaysia, uh, we are very familiar with the Bodhi tree, with the Banyan tree. Uh, these two trees uh, we very often see uh, on old buildings. Uh, the birds uh, eat the small seeds uh, and shit, uh, defecate uh, on these uh, old buildings. Uh, and these trees start to grow uh, at the top of old shop houses. Uh, and sometimes they grow quite big and you can see their roots coming down. So imagine uh, if the same trees uh, were uh, the same seeds uh, were to be lodged inside some other tree. Uh, they will also uh, grow in that way. Especially there's one called the strangling fig. Uh, strangling fig. Maybe some of you have seen, some of you have not seen. But uh, there's one uh, devotee in uh, Chen Riang. Uh, he has this uh, 12 acres piece of land. Now uh, it's very beautiful uh, with a lot of trees. Uh, and years ago. Uh, about 12 years ago, he planted many oil palm trees. What happened, these oil palm trees grew to quite tall, you know, I think about 40 feet. But then uh, these birds uh, dropped the uh, seeds of this uh, strangling fig on it. 
and this strangling figure has grown over this uh, old palm tree uh, until the old palm tree has died uh, and it's standing uh, tall uh, on its uh, roots, uh, just like the uh, banyan tree, you know, the banyan tree lets down its roots uh, after a while, uh, all the roots uh, become the trunk itself. Uh. So these are very powerful trees uh, and the peculiar thing is that the seeds are so small uh, and the trees are so huge. So. So the Buddha says, uh, the person, uh, when he goes forth uh, from the household life into homelessness, uh, he is left behind worldly pleasures. But he is not careful. Uh, these uh, worldly pleasures uh, uh, will come back to him. The craving uh, for worldly pleasures uh, will come back to him. Uh, uh, so he becomes bent, twisted and split uh, because of this um, craving for these pleasures. Uh. What becomes bent? twisted and split, not his body, but his monkhood, the monk in him, uh, becomes uh, bent, twisted and split. And Buddha continued, These five monks are obstructions, hindrances, and circlers of the mind, weakness of wisdom. What five? Sensual desire is an obstruction, a hindrance, and circling the mind, a weakener of wisdom, ill will, is an obstruction, a hindrance, encircling the mind, a weakener of wisdom, sloth and torpor, restlessness and remorse, doubt, are all obstructions, hindrances, encircling the mind, weakness of wisdom. These are the five obstructions, hindrances, encirclers of the mind, weakness of wisdom. These seven factors of enlightenment monks are non-obstructions, non-hindrances, non-encirclers of the mind. When developed and cultivated, they lead to the realization of the fruit of true knowledge and liberation. What seven? The enlightenment factor of recollection is a non-obstruction, non-hindrance, non-encirclers of the mind. Uh, similarly, the investigation of Dhamma uh, energy, etc. All these uh, factors of enlightenment uh, are non-obstructions, non-hindrances, non-encirclers of the mind. When developed and cultivated, they lead to the realization of the fruit of true knowledge and liberation. It's the end of the sutta. Uh, this chapter uh, on the Bojangas uh, about the seven factors of enlightenment. Uh, what you find in this chapter they talk a lot uh, about the five hindrances because the five hindrances uh, are the opposite uh, of the seven factors of enlightenment. Whereas the seven factors of enlightenment uh, bring you to enlightenment, uh, the, uh, the five hindrances uh, bring you uh, the other way uh, to non-wisdom. They are an obstruction, uh, a hindrance uh, to liberation, uh, to enlightenment. Uh, that's why they are often mentioned in this chapter. The next sutta is quite similar but slightly different. 46.40 monks. These five hindrances are makers of blindness, causing lack of vision, causing lack of knowledge, detrimental to wisdom, tending to vexation, leading away from Nibbana. What five? The hindrance of sensual desire is a maker of blindness, causing lack of vision, causing lack of knowledge, detrimental to wisdom, tending to vexation, leading away from Nibbana. Similarly, the hindrance of ill will, sloth and torpor, restlessness and remorse, doubt. Uh, in, in these five hindrances are makers of blindness, causing lack of vision, causing lack of knowledge, detrimental to wisdom, tending to vexation, leading away from Nibbana. These seven factors of enlightenment monks are makers of vision, makers of knowledge, promoting the growth of wisdom, free from vexation, leading towards Nibbana. But seven, the enlightenment factors of recollection, the factor of investigation of Dhamma, the, inve the factor of uh, energy, etc. Uh, these seven factors of enlightenment are makers of vision, makers of knowledge, promoting the growth of wisdom, free from vexation, leading towards Nibbana as the end of the Sutta. So you see, uh, the reason uh, why we are blind, uh, we don't have vision and knowledge, uh, is because of these five hindrances. Uh, 
and they lead us away from Nibbana. So, whereas the seven factors of enlightenment, they lead us to Nibbana. Now, the other day we read that the seven factors of enlightenment, when you develop all the seven factors, they lead you progressively from the first jhana to the second jhana to the fourth jhana. Only when you attain the fourth jhana do you attain the last factor of the, this, uh, this last enlightenment factor, which is called upekka, equanimity, and spiritual equanimity. Uh, in the sutta we read earlier, refers to the fourth jhana. Only when you attain the fourth jhana do you have spiritual equanimity. Uh. So, so from here, uh, when you can compare these two, uh, you realize uh, why in the Majjhima Nikaya, and Venerable Ananda was asked, what type of meditation is praised by the Buddha? What type of meditation is not praised by the Buddha? Venerable Ananda said, the type of meditation praised by the Buddha is the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana. Uh, so when you, when you develop the seven factors of enlightenment, uh, you are actually developing these four jhanas. And the type of meditation not praised by the Buddha is the type of meditation uh, where the five hindrances are not eliminated. So like nowadays, uh, people teach vipassana meditation, although it's useful uh, for people to understand themselves. Uh, but when you practice pure vipassana meditation, you don't get rid of the five hindrances. So when you don't get rid of the five hindrances, uh, uh, you are still blinded. Uh, you are still here, the sutta says, you have lack of vision lack of knowledge, uh, you are being led away from Nibbana. So, in that sense, uh, the pure Vipassana meditation uh, does not lead you to Nibbana at all. Uh, they give you understanding of your own mind, of yourself, but definitely they cannot lead you to enlightenment. Only when you practice the seven factors of, of enlightenment uh, and attain all the seven factors, uh, which means you have attained the four jhanas, uh, and then you are rid of the five hindrances, uh, and that will lead you to Nibbana. Uh, so any meditation uh, where the five hindrances are not got rid of, uh, that is definitely not Buddhist meditation. Uh, Buddhist meditation is only one type uh, stated by Rebbe Ananda in the Majjhima Nikaya. First jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana, only then.